Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna go through some of the worst study strategies that you're likely using one of these, like you just need to stop. Let's get into it. So in today's video, we're gonna go through some of those study strategies that are just like face palm worthy and like you just need to stop. And in the flip side, if you're doing any of these, we'll also talk about ways that you can make them better. That way they're less face palmy. Let's get to it. And so number one is reviewing your PowerPoints. Now hear this from students a lot, which says that their main kind of go-to is to review the slides they get from lecture the day of, before. Now I hear this strategy from students a lot where they say they basically go through their PowerPoints as many times as possible before a quiz. They just feel like every time they go, they feel like they learn a little more. But the main test that I ask them, and I'm gonna ask you, is that if you review your PowerPoints as a form of review or a study strategy, how much of that PowerPoint do you really remember after, like immediately after you're done? And some of my students, especially the coaching students I work with, will have this like epiphany. They're like, mm, honestly, not very much. And situations like that are the perfect way to highlight when a study strategy doesn't work for you. So reviewing your PowerPoints is a very kind of passive form of learning. And the most biggest issue that most students have, and this is how you make it better, is that there's no way to go from reviewing your PowerPoints to kind of having some kind of system where you can then review as a form of like question and answer. So one way to actually make PowerPoints more useful for you and not have to go through them many times is you can do things like adding questions to the side of them or in your comment section. That way you can go through each individual slide and say, do I know the answer to this question? If you do, you move on to the next one. If you don't, then you look at the actual material on the slide to actually get the answer. Or you can use other advanced strategies like I talk about here in this Anki video on how you can make a PowerPoint into an entire deck of flashcards within minutes. Now study strategy number two that you need to stop using is to create outlines. Now I know there's some students who swear by outlines. So if that's you just like hear me out for just one second, I know why they're attractive. You know, you can put all of your information from your own words in one place and make it as neat and nice as possible. Biggest drawback, however, unfortunately, is that it just takes too much time. If you're a pre-med or if you're med school or another type of schooling altogether, that takes a lot of your time. Using a lot of your time to create your information versus sort of viewer information is really the biggest issue with a lot of these study strategies. And I know from personal experience why outlines are attractive because that was my go-to study strategy my first few months in medical school. And I would try to go through every syllabus chapter and lecture and try to put it into a, essentially a mini notebook of all of the outlines. And ideally I knew that if I knew everything within the outline, then I'd be great for the exam. The biggest problem again from this is that it just took me way too much time to make it. Often the information I actually included wasn't that much in my own words as much as I thought I was when I was creating it. So often I was like, why did I even write this? Because it still doesn't make sense to me. It sounds a lot like the PowerPoints I took the information from. And I don't really understand what I was trying to tell myself here. So again, just took me too much time and I wasn't able to get to the most important part of learning, which is to review the actual material. And so a pro tip of how you can make outlines work better for you, is instead of having an outline of facts, information, and bullet points, you can essentially have a list of all the questions that you want to answer for an individual lecture. And I made a full video on how to do that here in a Q&E video. It'll also be linked down below. But essentially, if you can look at all those questions and be like, no, a majority of this, you can move on to the next lecture. And if you don't, then you can go back to your slides or the syllabus lecture that you got that question from and then fill in the gap. Now, study strategy number three is group study. And I know there's some of you guys that are like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I love group studying. I love interacting with my peers. I love quizzing each other. I love going on whiteboard sessions. And all of that is very attractive. I personally like those aspects of group studying. The biggest problem is, is that group studying is really dependent on one, who you pick in your group. So you have to get that right. And two, how well your group does of helping you with your knowledge gaps. And if you somehow have the first aspect of it right, having the right people around you, usually the second thing is not to your advantage. Remember a group focus on things on a very scheduled basis. Today we're gonna to cover lecture one through 10, tomorrow we're gonna to do lecture 11 through 20, but unfortunately maybe you needed more time on lecture one to 10 or a specific lecture that the rest of your group members just felt more strongly about. You don't get to have that sense of immediate review and saying, huh, Lux, you suck at lecture number five, but you're great at everything else your group Group is really spending time with. Yes, you can teach them and yes, you can kind of hone in on your education of those lectures even more, but you are missing out on those things that you struggle with. And so the flip side, if you do enjoy group studying and working with your peers, one thing you could do is to create a big database of a bunch of questions that you and your peers create for each individual lecture. So you add your own, your peers add your own, and it doesn't really matter what you do in group studying. If there are certain lectures that you don't do so well on, you can try to see, can I answer the questions from lecture two that I created, that my peers created? If not, then maybe you can then ask them like, hey, what did you mean by this question? And that's where you fill in your gap for a lecture that they may otherwise not have given the attention or time for you to learn. A study strategy number four that you just simply need to stop doing is listening to lecture. Now, some students have already made this transition where they've realized that 
Lectures are helpful, but perhaps I can speed it up or go through a supplementary resource. But some students still have committed to going to lecture because they feel like they learn better by sitting there for an hour a day listening to somebody talk to them. And whether you're in person or listening to a lecture on a virtual platform, doesn't really matter. A majority of us simply just don't use that hour or half an hour, depending on if you speed up a lecture or not, effectively. Just again, ask your question just like we did for the PowerPoint. How much do you remember after you leave the lecture hall from what he just said? And simply to highlight the effectiveness or lack thereof of listening to a lecture, use the same exercise we just used for PowerPoints, which is imagine you left the lecture hall immediately after the lecture ended. How much do you remember? How much do you recall? If you had to teach a complete stranger to say, hey, like I just didn't get to attend class, can you just teach me everything they taught you? Yes, there's gonna be things that stuck out, but there's gonna be some things you're like, I actually don't remember that. And how ridiculous is it to just like spend an hour of your life and saying, I only remember like 20 to 30% of what I just learned there. And this is a lesson that I learned the hard way but really early on in medical school, which is that lectures simply weren't my main form of learning. My main form of learning as we've kind of put through the theme of this kind of video is doing as many questions as possible and saying, okay, you suck at that, you suck at that, you're okay here, so let's focus on those first two things and spend more of your time doing that, whether that means going back to lecture or the PowerPoints, but using those resources like PowerPoints, outlines, and lectures as your primary form of learning and then fitting in time for things which are really the most important, which is flashcards, practice questions, whiteboard sessions, and really honing in on your mistakes is really the biggest issue that students have in medical school as well as other parts in their educational career. So on the flip side, one way you can make lecture more effective is as you're going through the lecture, just like we did before, whether you're making your outlines or the PowerPoints, add questions to the notes you actually take. And if there's a session where the professor is just going on a tangent or you're not really sure what they're saying, you can take a half second saying, can I answer those last five questions that I wrote down? If you can't, perfect, you made a retention that's going to help you in the future. If you can't, then maybe you can go back to that slide as he or she finishes up their tangent. And then as soon as their tangent is over, you can pick right back up and add your notes and questions for upcoming reviews. Next, we have to talk about annotating on a high yield resource. Now I hear this study strategy a lot, especially for medical students who will grab some kind of high yield resource, particularly for like a board exam. And while they're watching videos or learning from lectures or flashcards, they, then they write and spend time creating notes and annotations on the respective chapters because they say, okay, when it's time to study for board exams, I'm going to use this like personalized notebook that I've created myself of those notes. But the problem really lies in the amount of time you spend in creating those annotations because again, I ask my coaching students all the time, it's like, oh, you're taking notes, cool. How often do you use those notes to review what you just learned? And somebody will say, no, I'm just kind of hoping I can use it in the future. Again, you will learn so much better if you focus on reviewing now and having a system where you can continue to review up until exam day versus like creating some kind of saying, I hope I eventually get back to this later. So instead you can go from a system where you go from video to annotation to saying, oh, I'm gonna do videos to related Anki cards or flashcards from that video or videos to practice questions. And if you miss certain topics, you can say, oh, while that video made sense, I still missed these sequelas of questions. And while I thought the connection was there, it actually wasn't. That is an immediate form of kind of feedback you have and that helps the learning process both in the short as well as long term. And then the last study technique that you need to stop using, this is something I was using, so just like listen to my first year self when I say this, stop reading your syllabus and taking notes. Now if you watch any of my other videos here on YouTube and if you haven't, I'll just link down below a study playlist that we have for you. Understand that learning happens in a variety of forms. One is when you can grab the information, two is when you review and actually learn the information, and three is when you continue to review and test yourself to really build your knowledge. The latter half is really where your retention, both short-term and long-term happen. Fortunately, most of us spend way too much time on the information gathering phase than we do of actually learning and reviewing the material. And the same goes for when you read your syllabus and you're taking notes. If again, if I had to ask you the question of like, how much do you remember after you read that syllabus chapter? Most of us say 15, 20, 30%. And if those are the answers for the study techniques you're using, then either the question needs to be, do I even need to do this in the first place? Or two, how can I speed this up so then I can go to something that increases my retention by 70 to 80%. Most students, including my past self, fell into this trap thinking that you have to spend time reading a syllabus lecture and taking notes in the hope of ideally remembering it when a practice question as well as an exam or quiz question comes in the future. And But in reality, most of us don't go back to the reading material, much less the actual notes that we created. So really that time that we spent was not that effective versus me doing the lecture a little bit quicker, even though all the retention wasn't there to then be able to jump to something that increases my retention like asking myself questions using pre-made practice questions that my school or professor or lecturer may have given or doing pre-made Anki decks or practice questions those really say okay like you learned about microcytic anemia you just did questions on a microcytic anemia and dang lux you suck at microcytic anemia let's go watch a video let's go read that lecture in the specific part to really understand the nuances 
you know, making the mistakes and making those corrections as many times as possible is really where the retention happens. But simply reading and taking notes on the side on things that you eventually will not come back to is a complete waste of time. But those guys are some of the worst study strategies that you may be using. I know I definitely used a lot of them and also ways that you can make them better. Now, again, if you're using some of these, don't get offended if it's like your best way to study. Just ask yourself how effective is it as you walk away from that study strategy in terms of overall retention. If it's something that you actually find to be really effective, stay to it. Don't let this video and don't let my lack of knowledge on how you're studying really dictate what you should be doing or not. But if you do walk away from a study strategy saying, it really wasn't that helpful. I just felt like it's something I should be doing. And ask yourself how you can make it a little bit more effective or jump to something more effective quicker. Now we covered a lot in this video and this is really the surface or the tip of the iceberg of how you can improve your study. Now there's a few ways you can learn how to do this. One, you can watch a video like this on how you can study step-by-step -step here on the MD Journey YouTube channel. And I promise you that video will break down a lot of different things that you can do better and more correct, as well as checking out programs like our Rapid Study Accelerator, which is something you can watch in literally a day or two to really say, okay, I don't need this in my study strategy. I definitely need this. And this is how next couple of weeks and months, I'm going to make my study system more efficient. So this is the exact study system that I basically use to go from 10 hours a day to five hours a day. And it's not necessarily gonna tell you what study strategy you should be using, but specifically what study strategies will work for you to become more and more efficient. After watching this video, if there's a little bit of excitement as well as anxiety, understanding that maybe you need to make a lot of changes and you want to have somebody just personally walk you through how to fix it and doing it really quickly, then consider checking out our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. So this is basically, you can kind of see the types of results or students that are getting it simply after one call. So if you feel like you need a complete overhaul, a complete redirection, want to study less, still get better grades, and check out our study program and coaching program down below as well. But those guys are some of the worst study strategies you could be using. If you agree or disagree with me, add your comments down below. Maybe there's something that you're actually using here, but you're using it in a different way that maybe I didn't think about. Love to hear from you, so add your comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, if you're like, eh, it wasn't terrible, <laughs> hit that like button. Really helps support the video, helps the channel. And the main reason I asked to smash that like button is not only for me and for the channel, but there is somebody who is probably using majority of these study strategies. If it's not you, maybe it's one of your classmates or somebody across the world that you'll never get to meet, but maybe hitting that like button increases the chances this video shows up in front of their face and says, ha, maybe I should improve my study strategy. So if you wanna show your support for the channel as well as your fellow student colleagues, then go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new to this channel or have been lurking around, hit that subscribe button as well as notification bell to get notified when new videos just like this one go out on a weekly basis. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for making it to the very end of the video. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on your journey. Thanks for always being a part of mine. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy this video, again, this video right here on how to study in medical school step-by-step, -step, as well as this video right here on how to use Anki like a pro to just like destroy it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy these and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends. Peace.